חיים, חיים ולך. So yet yeah, we're discussing the Rashi in the beginning of this week's Torah portion about Hashem making Yitzhak's face look like Avram's face. Now, the way Rashi presents this is, what did God do because of the scoffers of the generation? The scoffers of the generation were saying that Avram was not the father of Yitzhak. So what did God do? And the, the response is, God made Yitzhak's face look similar to Avram's. So the reason why it's presented in a way of a question and an answer is because a question, in Hebrew, the word question is a kushia, and the root of the word kushia is kasha, which means difficulty. So there's something difficult going on, and because there's something difficult going on here, there's also something difficult coming, happening over there up in, in heaven, and that's why Hashem had to do something unusual, something special, to make Yitzhak's, Yitzhak's face look like Avram's. We, we find the expression in the Talmud, it was difficult for God to uh, make matches with, between husbands and wives, as difficult it is, as it was for him to split the Yamsuk. So it's called, some, it's referred to as something difficult for Hashem. What's the difficulty here? Why is it hard for Yitzhak's face to look like Avram's face? So let's talk about Kriyas Yamsuf, the splitting of the Red Sea first. The fact that the water of the Reed Sea is standing like a wall, hard wall, that's not the difficulty. And it says in Tanya that creating something out of nothing is a far greater miracle than making the water stand up like a wall. So what's the reason that the Torah, the Talmud refers to the splitting of the Reed Sea as something difficult if it's not considered a greater, as great of a miracle as creation? Creation is something out of nothing. Here's just changing, changing the properties of the water. So why is it called difficult? So the answer is, is because at the time of the splitting of the Red Sea, there were two opposite things happening. There was roughly Yisrael, and there was Nogaf of Mitzrayim. There was healing, meaning salvation for the Jewish people. And there was a plague for the Egyptians. There was a calamity, and there was a salvation happening concurrently. If the, split, the sea would not have split, the Egyptians would not have entered the sea. So the attribute of justice arises before God and says, why are these people, meaning the Jews, different to these people, meaning the Egyptians? Because both these people, the Jews and the Egyptians, are serving idols. So that's why it was difficult, because according to the order of the spiritual cosmic order, the, the according to the order that Hashem set up in the world, the attribute of justice needs to be considered, needs to be respected, needs to be paid attention to. And at the time of the splitting of the Red Sea, God throws out completely the whole attribute of justice and doesn't go according to the order that he decided that it was important to set up in the world. In a similar way, we can understand the idea of Yitzchak's face being a form to be similar to Avram's face, why that's called a difficult thing, why it's a question, why it's hard. The Avis, our forefathers, are called a chariot to God's will. In God's chariots, there is the face of the lion, there's the face of the ox, and they're different. The face of the lion is on the right, the face of the ox is on the left. The face of the lion represents uh, the right in general, and Judaism is associated with kindness. And the left is associated with strength and justice. Avraham is on the right. Yitzchak is on the left. Avram is associated with the right and the lion. And Yitzchak is associated with the ox and the left. So you cannot have both Avram and Yitzchak together. In God's chariot, they have each of them has their own space, the right and the left. And here, 
and, and yet here Hashem has a question now. So what do I do? What should I do about the scoffers of the generation? According to the order, the spiritual cosmos, there are two opposite things that can't come together. And yet, because there were the scoffers of the generation, and they said that Sarah was pregnant from Avimelech, God did not consider the limitations that he established in the world, that he established in the spiritual cosmos. And although Yitzhak and Avram are two different, two different realms, Hashem makes the face of Yitzhak look like, look like Avram's. And this was only because of the scoffers of the generation. So when the scoffers of the generation, which represent not just people who make fun, but they represent all of evil, all of Klippa. When they're in their place, when they stay in their, you know, wherever they want to want to stay, uh, Randall Futafas had a famous niggin based on Samuel Khanafshi. Uh, in Samuel Khanafshi, he had his own own version, he would say, Hey, you, Yitzhahara, get out of here, go to your brothers. They will feed you, they will support you, uh, they'll take care of you. It's uh, when the Yitzhahara is in his place with his brothers, the Yitzhahara, when the Klippa is in, in their place. So then, okay, so then, we could keep the face of the right and the face of the left and, and, the, and everything could stay in their place. But when Klippa is encroaching in the realm of the holiness, when they're making problems and they're starting to make their ways towards Avram and Yitzchak and give their opinion about Yitzchak, and they're saying that Yitzchak doesn't belong to Avram, he belongs to Avimelech, and not just some parts of Yitzchak belong to Avimelech, but his whole being, his whole essence, his birth is from Avimelech. His essence belongs to Avimelech. So that, so to speak, touches God's heart. And because of this, God does away with the entire spiritual cosmos. I can't happen. I, I cannot let that happen. I cannot let them take away my Yitzchak and take Yitzchak and bring him to, Avim, to Avimelech. What does this mean for us? Avram and Yitzchak are called the fathers, the forefathers, because whatever happened to them and whatever is inside of them, they bequeath all souls. So that means that every single thing that happened in their lives happens in our life. So we also have to have this combination of chesed and gvura. As it says in Tanya, that at times a person is able to achieve what seems impossible, to rejoice about your connection to Hashem at the same time that you're feeling the denigrity of your body and the distance of your body, at the same time you're rejoicing with the mitzvahs that you have. And, and the author says it's possible because there are two different causes for your feelings. You have a cause to be happy and a cause to be sad. And therefore it's possible to happen at the same time. So yes, this is beyond the order. Happiness and tears are two different places, come from two different places. But, and we can't, just like it says in Sifri that love and reverence of Hashem cannot really exist at the same time, but because it's ordinarily love and reference are two different feelings, two different arenas, two different parts of the soul, and they can't come together. But somehow when it has to do with Hashem, you could have love and reverence at the same time. Not in, re in regards to anything else in the world. Everything else in the world, if you're having fear, not having love, you're having love, not having fear. Regarding Hashem, there's, it's an anomaly. It's possible to have both of these things together, to have love and reverence together. And this is all something that we get from our forefather from, Ab from Abraham and Yaakov because Yitzhak's face, like Abraham's face, were able to have chesed and gura at the same time. It, it, the author does say in Tanya that it's not so easy to do this. And he says, that for most people, you can't really achieve this easily. And therefore, he says, on Thursday night, you should think about your denigrity and your problems and your spiritual issues, and then rejoice on Shabbos. And we know that the Rebbe said, that in our generation, we're past the Thursday night of history, dividing, dividing all of history into days of the week. We're past Thursday night. We're in Friday afternoon. So therefore, we're not um, meant to go deeply into our, our dignity and our faults, even on, on Thursday nights. But anyways, um, there's another message over here, message like this. In order to make, to dispel the claim, the notion of the scoffers of the generation, God could have made Avram's face look similar to Yitzhak's face. But instead, he made Yitzhak's face look similar to Avram's face. Why, did, why does he do it that way? 
the message is, this is where this um, uh, meme is going around about something the Rebbe said. I think it's based upon this, this sentence over here. When you have a choice to do two, two, different, um, two different ways you could educate your child or two different ways you could do anything, you're not sure if you should go with, with kindness or with justice. You don't know. So you could either make Yitzhak's face look like Avram's face, or you either go towards kindness, or you can make Avram's face like Yitzhak's face and go towards justice. Which way should you go? So the Rebbe says, when you don't know which way to go, always go towards kindness. As it says in Tanya, chapter 32, that uh, when you bring a Jew closer to you, with Lav Av Yisrael, and you try to make them closer to Judaism as well, and you're successful in making them your friend, but you're not successful in bringing them closer to Judaism, the author of said, you've still done a mitzvah. There's a mitzvah of, 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 of befriending a Jew. That's a mitzvah. You haven't lost that mitzvah just because you haven't done another mitzvah of helping them put on film or whatever. It doesn't mean you've lost the mitzvah number one. So uh, bringing another person close to you is intrinsically a valuable thing. So if th that's why, if you don't know which way to go, always go with kindness, because that's certainly a mitzvah. It's cer there's certainly a benefit in reaching out to another person with love. Um, there's another point over here. And that is in, ref in relevance to the time that we're in. Tonight is Rosh Chodesh Kislev, and Parshas Toldos either falls out in on Rosh Chodesh Kislev, or to this year on the second day of Kislev, and they, as the year the Rebbe said the Sicha, 1965, Rosh Chodesh Kislev was on the second of Kislev. So it's either the Shabbos before or part of Chodesh Kislev, the month of Gaul, the month of redemption, <clears throat> the month when Hashem finally allowed the promise of Mashiach to the Baal Shem Tev, that he will come when the wellsprings of Hasidus are spread to the outside. So all of the, our discussion now has a relevance to the month of Kislev. Why? It says in the Zohar that there are two parts of the Torah. There is the body of the Torah, the revealed parts of the Torah, and there is the soul of the Torah, the secrets of the Torah. According to the order that God made in the world, the soul of the Torah and the body of the Torah are distinct. There's a clear demarcation between them. You cannot make the soul the body and the body the soul. In our service of Hashem, there's such a thing that you're supposed to make your body holy and bring your Hashem's your aspirations to be relevant and concrete and down to earth. But in the Torah itself, the body of Torah and the soul of Torah are distinct. And each of them has their place and each of them has their way of, of functioning. The body of Torah is something which is revealed. The soul of Torah is something which is hidden. That's why it's called the secrets of the Torah. And once you reveal the secret, it's no longer a secret. So the soul of Torah is something which is hidden and secret. The body of Torah, which is, is something which is revealed. Comes the day of Yitzh Kislev. Yitzh Kislev says, hey, attention came our chapters. The well springs are now going to be spread to the outside. Take the inner dimension of the Torah and bring it all the way out to the outside. Besides the fact that Hasidus Chabad specifically, as opposed to other ways of studying Hasidus, um, brings down the deepest secrets of the Torah into our logic and understanding. Besides that, um, and the Alter of himself, after his release from prison, did this in a much, on an exponentially greater way than before. Um, there's another point here that it's not only meant to um, reach our understanding of our godly soul. We're supposed to reach the understanding of our animal soul as well. When we learn Hasidus, it's supposed to make sense to us in a way that just is concrete and down to earth and make and actually the way we think as people, not the way that we think when we're trying to um, uh, give a uh, nice sermon at a uh, bar mitzvah. But, but the way we, we actually think, that's what this is meant, meant to be. It's meant, meant to actually change the way we actually think so that the, these deep secrets of the Torah should go down to our human mind and, 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 and give us glasses to look at the world and think differently about what's, what's going on in the world. But besides the outside within ourselves, that the wellsprings of the Chassidus reach the, the, our, the nethermost part of ourselves, 
Besides that, there's also the instruction in the simple sense that the wellsprings of chassidus have to reach to the outside, to someone outside of yourself. And not just outside of yourself, but in your shul, in your social arena, in your uh, comfort zone. The outside is the Torah, the Baal Shem Tev heard from Mashiach, spread the wellsprings to the quote unquote outside. What does outside mean? There's no qualifier on the word outside. That means on the farthest level of outside that you could possibly imagine, that's what it has to reach. So the question is, what are you doing? Even the reveal parts of Torah have rules about who could study them and when they could, they could be studied. Like there's a verse in the Torah, Hashem tells the wicked man, why are you reading my commandments? Now, the answer is that you're supposed to study Torah even for the wrong reasons, because eventually you study them for the right reasons. But there are exceptions to that rule. Someone studying Torah just in order to spite, in order to prove, disprove Torah, or in order to brag about it. It's, it's not so simple that you just study Torah. Um, uh, uh, if, you know, if you have some selfish motives, you still should do it, because, because deep within you, your neshama wants it. It doesn't just mean that one day you will do this for the right reasons. Means as Chassidus famously says, within you that you are feeling a selfish motive within you, your neshama is yearning to connect to God and, and to learn Torah. So, so, but there are rules about the real parts of Torah, and when it should be studied, when it cannot be studied, and how can we talk about spreading the deepest secrets of the Torah and bringing them to the outside? There was a Rabbiel Khan al Shalom. He was once challenged by some Hasidically challenged Jews about, um, about Hasidus and about Sadiqim, who speaks a very interesting conversation he had with him. Um, I think he was talking about the Rebbe as being a Navi, as having prophecy and, and prophesizing the future and, and how the Rebbe's words about the coming of Mashiach, how it's really happening. And one of the members of the audience asks Rabbi Yael, can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you believe that the Vilna Goyim was a tzaddik? So of course. Do you believe that he had prophecy? Is of course. So, so he said that you shouldn't study any of this stuff. How could that be? Can a tzaddik make mistakes? So Rabbi Yael said like this. He says, let's forget about tzaddikim for a second. Let's talk about angels. Could an angel make a mistake? Of course, an angel can't make a mistake. No, definitely not. So when God wanted to give the Torah to the Jewish people, the Talmud says the angels came to God and said, God, how can you give these deep secrets to the Jewish people? This is something you've held, had, held upstairs for thousands of years. Do not give this to human beings. It's not for them. So the angels were right. The angels were right. It wasn't meant to come to this world until 2448. When God says, now is the time when the deepest treasure I have has to be given to the world. So in a similar way, the Vilna Goyen has had a point. It's true that they are called the secrets of the Torah. And therefore, they're meant to be hidden for a time. However, when there is a situation where a Jew is in trouble and a Jew comes from the essence of God, and then Hashem does not reckon with the order that he himself made in creation, and God makes the face of Yitzhak like, look like Avraham. In other words, when there are those who take a Jewish child and they say, this Jewish child does not belong to Hashem, does not belong to Avraham, this Jewish child belongs to the street, this Jewish child belongs to the world, this Jewish child is, is not meant to practice as a Jew, those so these strong winds of the world cause God to take his Yitzhak, to take his secrets, to take the part of Torah. Which is called a, 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 which is usually in a state of gvura, in a state of restraint, in a state which is held back, as not, and it's not meant to be revealed. And Hashem takes the Yitzchak and makes it into an Avraham. Hashem Avraham is about kindness, about revelation. And Yitzchak is about restraint and strength. So Hashem takes the Yitzchak part of Torah, the soul part of Torah, and He reveals it because He says, "I cannot allow that Yitzchak should be taken away and brought to Abimelech." So. The famous example that the Alter Rebbe says about the king's crown, that the, the king's son was, the prince was once very um, sick, and the king asked all of his uh, doctors to examine his son, and he came to the king and said, your majesty, 
there's a problem here. Your son is so sick that there's no real cure for him except for this, this uh, uh, stone, crazily precious stone. If you take this precious stone and you grind it up and you mix it with water, that could save your son. So King says, so go to the store, the royal treasure house and find it. And they, went to, they go to the royal treasure house. And after a few hours or days, they come back to the king, your majesty. We have good news, we have bad news. The good news is we found the stone. The bad news is this is the crown jewel. This is what makes your crown the crown. King says, what are you talking about? So my son's life is at stake. Take this jewel and crush it up and give it to my son. The, the doctor said to the king, your majesty, your son is so sick right now, it's not worth it because he's just going to spit it out. The king says, do it anyways. Maybe one drop will go in and that drop will be enough to revive my son. So ordinarily, there's rules about the king's crown. There is a, a halachic definition of, of a, a of importance of the crown of a king. And yet the king says that when we're talking about the life of his son, it's all nothing. It's all worthless. If someone uses a king's crown for himself, someone to say, oh, let me try this on, he deserves a death penalty. And here, as the king takes the whole crown and just grinds it all up, even though it's just the king's son, it's not the king himself. Only, there's only one king at a time. So he's not the king, he's just his son. Because since he is his son, it touches the very essence of the king and all calculations are put aside. And the altar is emphasizing that it doesn't matter if the king's son is able to fully absorb this, this medicine. One drop is enough, and that makes it all worth it. So the relevance, again, of, of what we're discussing about changing Yitzhak's face to Avram's face to the month that we're in the month of Kislev is, again, Yitzhak is associated with restraint, with gvura, with strength, which that is associated with the hidden realm of Terah. Avram, whose attribute is kindness, is associated with revelations, associated with the revealed parts of Torah. And ordinarily, they are distinct, and, there's a time, and, and this is revealed, and this is hidden. But, but because the scoffers of the generation are saying that Yitzhak belongs to Avimelech, that his whole being is not meant to be Jewish, and meant to be some, someone else, and which represents winds of the world, which are pushing the Jewish child away from, from his Judaism. So Hashem says, take the crown, take the stone, and crush it all up, take the deepest secrets of the Torah, and, and now is the time that has to be revealed. And uh, the Yitzhak has to become Abba. And that's what I want to share today. Any questions, comments, or criticism? All right, have a great day, everyone. Let's